morning, everyone. Happy September. Happy Tuesday. So happy to see all of you today. Welcome you joining today's hybrid class. The topic is rev up mortgage, more listings with reverse. I'm Pauline Lam from Kota Realty, your 2021 co-chair education committee, West and Gabriel Valley Realtors. A friendly reminder, all participants will be muted during the meeting. Should you have any questions, please enter it into the chat box. Speaker will answer your question in the Q&A section. This section is being recorded and will be available on the YouTube channel, West and Gabriel Valley Realtors. Now, I'm so glad to invite Jeff Huang, our education committee member, to introduce you our special speaker, Mr. Ryan Cleese from Mortgage, Reverse Mortgage Educator. Jeff, the floor is yours. Thank you, Pauline. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jeff Wong from EXP Realty. Uh, the Education Committee of the West San Gabriel Valley Realtors is happy to host today's topic, uh, Revening Up Your Listing in Reverse. And it's from Reverse Mortgage Educator. We're happy to have Ryan and Robert, who founded the Reverse Mortgage Edu Educator in 2013, uh, to educate senior homeowners and realtors about the reverse mortgage process and how it can be beneficial. Ryan has been in the reverse mortgage industry since 2008, and Robert since 2006. Ryan loves to travel and recently got back from a three-week road trip. Would love to hear about it. Robert loves playing the guitar. He's part of a cover band, enjoys talking about his guitar collection. So without further ado, Ryan, take it away. Thank you. All right, let's get my uh, screen shared here so we can get going. Hopefully do the job. All right, there we go. Okay, well, thank you for joining. And uh, uh, as you heard, my name is Ryan. I've been working in the reverse mortgage industry for some time, but the important thing is for about the last 10 years, I've been working with realtors more so and helping you guys understand how the reverse mortgage can help your business. A little static here. There we go. Okay, so let's uh, just get right into this. This is usually a three hour class, but we're gonna get it done today in about an hour. And here's three things that I think I have learned over the past 10 years after working with realtors and your clients. Three ways that a reverse mortgage is actually related to a real estate agent's business, uh, maybe more so than a loan officer. Yes, so a reverse mortgage actually is a relationship building tool, if you will. Usually when someone wants a loan, if they want like a 30 year fixed refinance, a regular loan on the house, if they asked you about that loan, you would probably give them someone, they'd refinance their house and that would be it. When somebody asks you about a reverse mortgage, there's a whole lot going on that's uh, more than meets the eye. There's more going on than just a loan. So let's talk about this for a second, because this relates directly to your business. And here's the top three ways that I've seen a reverse mortgage actually relate to your business. So when someone will ask you, what's a reverse mortgage? I want you to know that they don't actually want a loan. I know they're asking about a loan, but I can tell you that they're really not looking for a loan. What they're saying is I'm a homeowner, I have equity, and I need to figure out how to get some cash. I might be tied on uh, cash every month. Maybe my mortgage payment is a little hard to make. Maybe I need to get some money out of the house, but I'm a homeowner with equity, and I heard that a reverse mortgage can help do that. But I don't necessarily want a reverse mortgage. I just need to figure out a way to make my house more affordable to live in and get some money. So they're asking you about a reverse mortgage, but what you need to hear is I'm a homeowner who needs help. Now, with that being said, my first bullet point, if you look at it, you know, even less than 50%, which is what I have on the slide, of individuals that ask about a reverse mortgage to refinance their house actually get one. So when someone refinances house with a reverse mortgage, they're usually maybe getting money and get rid of a mortgage payment, right? That helps them in retirement. But I can tell you that less than half of them actually get the loan done. So what does that mean for you as a realtor? That means when someone is asking you, 
what's a reverse mortgage? More than half of them aren't gonna get a loan, but still need help with their house. So this is an opportunity for you as a realtor to say, you know what? Maybe there's something else that will help you. Since you didn't get a reverse mortgage, maybe I can help you. Maybe what they need as a homeowner is to sell the home. Maybe what they need as a homeowner is to downsize. Since I'm not giving them a reverse mortgage at this point in time, they can become your client. Back to my bullet point here for you as a realtor. When somebody's asking you about a reverse mortgage, they just want help and they're a homeowner. That means that you don't wanna let this client go. That they just don't wanna say, oh, they're gonna get a loan, that's not for me. The reality is probably more than half the time, it could be you that ends up needing to list their house because the reverse mortgage didn't help them. So here's another way that I see a reverse mortgage being part of a realtor's business. And that is this. There's a lot of homeowners, older homeowners out there, if my microphone's working still, who already know they need to sell their home. California has a very large swath of older homeowners. And as a matter of fact, the National Association of Realtors did a study in 2019. And you know that more than half of the individuals selling their homes right now are 55 and older? Literally more than half of the individuals selling homes are older than 55. Now, just because they sell their home doesn't mean they're done. Doesn't mean they're going to live with their kids. Doesn't mean they're gonna go rent. It means they're looking for a different house. Well, in retirement, one of the tough things about getting a loan is that you're retired. Your income is down. So number two here really talks about the fact that a reverse mortgage as a purchase loan is good for a realtor because you can get a reverse mortgage purchase loan when maybe you can't get any other financing. Maybe you have low income because you live on Social Security. Maybe your credit's been a little beat up. This loan helps clients to still be able to sell a home and rebuy uh, their next house, even if getting a loan was a problem for them. We're going to talk more about that coming up. And the third way that I really think that I've seen reverse mortgages help realtors, again, not necessarily loan officers, is this. There's a lot of reverse mortgages that have already been done out there, okay? And I'll show you software to help figure out who in your neighborhood might have a reverse mortgage. And you know that most of these clients have no idea how their heirs can inherit the property from them when they pass away. The heirs have no idea. But I can tell you this, what we've seen in our office is most of the time when an heir inherits a house from a client with a reverse mortgage, they sell it. So if a reverse mortgage really ends up being a sale most of the time, well, then that involves a realtor again. So for you as a realtor, it's very important to, and which we'll cover in a slide coming up, know how to help an heir get the property and then sell it. And since most heirs and most of the homeowners that have reverse mortgages have no idea or have forgotten how the heir is gonna do that, I'm gonna go through a slide that's gonna show you when you run across the client with reverse, you run across an heir and their parents have a reverse, that you can be the one they're gonna call to say, hey, we gotta get this house sold. And I know you know about this. Or to go a step farther, you have some fun with some software I'm gonna show you that shows you where all the reverse mortgage houses are at. And you can send them something, approach them if your neighborhood, mail them something, knock on the door, whatever. Let them know that you know about reverse mortgages and helping heirs, helping them make sure their heirs get the property. So these three ways right here I can tell you are about your relationship with the reverse mortgage as a realtor. Not me as a lender, not necessarily the client, but helping you in your business. So we're gonna get into these three bullet points here coming up and I'll refer back to them, but just know, these are three ways that help your business. A reverse mortgage is yours. Let's just start with the review of the reverse mortgage. For those of you that are a little cloudy on a reverse mortgage, I want to help you with an easy way to think about a reverse mortgage, okay? You guys all know how a regular loan works, right? 
you borrow money, you get a statement, you make a payment. That's a loan. Right? Well, imagine if that loan, you had a loan like that, you had a regular loan and you got your mortgage statement and said, oh, I owe $300,000 and the payment is $2,000. I got to send that in. Well, what if you could say for a given month, you know what? I think I'll skip my payment this month. I don't want to make a payment. I don't got the money. I need to use it for something else. And the bank said, okay. And next month you got your statement and just showed that you owe 300,000 plus a 2,000 you didn't pay, right? That would be cool. You could just skip a payment whenever you wanted to and no one would care. Well, that's really what a reverse mortgage does. It's really just a loan when you borrowed money, you've either refinanced the house or you've bought a home just like you would with a regular loan. Except when the statement shows up, it says, if you don't want to make a payment this month, nobody cares. We add what you owe and we'll send you a statement this month. Reverse mortgage is nothing more than really a regular loan with an optional payment feature. And the ultimate feature is that if you get that statement every month for the rest of your life and you say, I'm just going to keep not sending money in, you can do that and nobody will care. Now, your balance, of course, will be quite a bit higher, right? Because if you do that for 20 years and you don't make 240 payments at $2,000 a month, you can imagine your balance is going to be higher. But that's still your option. That's still what you have control of in this loan is every month deciding, do I want to send something in so my balance doesn't go up? Or do I need that money for something else? And I won't send a payment in. It's up to you. But the loan otherwise works like a basic loan. You get money to buy a house, you borrowed money, or you hold cash out and you refinance your house like a regular loan, same thing. We just give you the option of not making a payment. So a client will say, because a client may ask you, how does a reverse mortgage work, right? And you'll say, oh, well, you know how your loan works, right? You borrowed money and you make a payment. Well, sure. Well, a reverse mortgage is basically like what you have now, except if you don't make a payment, they'll just add it to what you owe. Oh, that's it? Yeah, that's a reverse mortgage. Oh, okay. Well, what if I never make a payment again? <laughs> Can something happen? What if I skip that payment every single month? Is there an end date to the loan? Is it a 10-year loan? No, see, the loan is for your life. So as long as you live, you have the ability to say, I'm not going to make that payment. Now, you have to follow some rules. We'll get to in a few minutes. As long as you follow the rules, nobody can ever send you something that tells you, hey, you've missed too many payments. Or, hey, you've been in this house for 30 years and you never sent us a payment. You got this loan at 62 and now you're 92. The loan's ending. It doesn't happen that way. The loan is designed to last for your lifetime. So 15 years ago, when I started doing reverse mortgages, I could only refinance somebody. So if somebody said, how does a reverse mortgage work? I'd say, oh, well, you just can only refinance your house. And they would say, oh, well, what if I don't want to stay in this house? I'd say, well, I can't help you. I only have a reverse finance. But about 10 years ago, more than that now, maybe about 12 years ago, they said, hey, wouldn't it be cool if you could get a loan to buy a home and then get payments if you want to? That sounds good. So they said, why not? We'll make the reverse mortgage and purchase too. So now you can buy a house, right? You put your down payment down. I give you a loan. And then when you get your statement, you decide if you want to skip payments or do whatever. So it became a purchase loan, which is nice for realtors. Because a lot of those homeowners I've been talking about, that 55% that are choosing to sell, that more than half of those 55-year-old homeowners are selling, a lot of them, now they can actually sell that house and when they buy their next home, give them a way to control their cash flow better. Hey, I've bought a house and maybe I don't wanna miss every payment. How about if I miss six payments a year? Then that'll give me some extra cash, but my balance won't go up so quick. My heirs will have more equity. Hey, that's pretty cool, right? That's a reverse purchase loan. So that's helpful for you all. Now I can tell you without doubt, after I don't know, 15 years at least of doing this loan, I can tell you that 
One of the reasons our industry has been around so long is that you can't get a reverse mortgage when maybe you can't get any other loan. We underwrite totally different. This goes back to my second bullet point of why it's valuable for you as a realtor. So many of those homeowners that are selling, right? More than half of the people selling their homes are over 55. The reason that they need to sell is because they're having a hard time keeping up the house, making the payment, they have to sell. They got to get some of that equity out. They need it for retirement. But yet a lot of them know, man, if I sell this house, I'm only going to have so much money when I sell it. How am I going to make this money work, buy a house, not worry about the mortgage payment in the next house? Well, now we know. If you sell the house you have and buy the next home with the reverse, there's a good chance you're going to qualify because we're much different qualifying. We qualify usually off of Social Security alone. Yeah, we can get like a $300,000 loan for someone that's only getting $1,500 a month Social Security. That's very helpful in retirement, right? So this bullet point right here, I can tell you, is one of the main reasons why our loan is great. Because if it's the difference between not getting a loan and not being able to own a home or being able to qualify for a reverse and own a home, hey, I'm glad that we could do that. I would have clients call in and they would say, I was told to call you because I need a loan to buy a home. I'd say, okay. And they'd say, I really don't want a reverse mortgage though. And I'd be like, okay, I get that. Nobody really wants a reverse mortgage. I've been in the business for a long time. As a dentist, I'd understand nobody wants to come. I'm a reverse guy. I'm not the most popular guy. But you're calling me because you need help, right? Yes. So I am not qualifying for a regular loan, but I need a loan to buy a home. Okay, well, how about this? How about, how about if I don't give you a reverse, but I help you qualify still? Oh, that'd be great. What kind of loan is that? Well, this is what it is. You qualify for this loan because we don't need a lot of income. And then when you get your statement every month, you, if you want to make a payment, you can, and you basically have a regular loan. You can do that with the reverse. You can make every payment. So maybe some people get a reverse and buy a house reverse because they can qualify for it, but then they can make a payment like a 30-year fixed payment if they want to. Or they can stop one day. So these bullet points up here, being able to qualify for the loan, being able to decide if you want to make a payment, be, being able to know that if you have to skip all your payments and you get to stay there for the rest of your life, these are good points about the loan. We'll get to how it gets messed up in another couple slides because you can mess it up. But from at least from this standpoint, I've only showed you a loan that allows a client to have a lot of options. I haven't said you have to let your balance go really high like your neighbors. I've said, if you want to make a payment every six months, your balance will be lower than your neighbor that took a reverse and made no payments. There's no prepayment penalties. So you decide how the loan works. If you buy a house the reverse and you need to move in a year, okay. How much do you owe? Well, I don't know. How many payments did you skip? Oh, I, I skipped six payments, Ryan, at $1,500 each. Oh, okay. Six, that sounds like uh, $9,000 extra that you've added to your balance when you sell the house. No big deal. You sell the house and you move on your way. So we have to know the flexibility of the loan because we have to know that everybody can use it differently instead of everyone thinking that there's only one way to use a reverse mortgage. And that's just to refinance a house and, and not make a payment, maybe see your balance go up. That's just one way. There's so many other ways. I'll tell you, I've seen through so many meetings with realtors, with you all, and your clients, where clients have said, I don't want to sell my house. But the only problem is we're at that table, which we know that they're having some troubles. They've either asked about how much I could get for my house, and we find out they're barely making a buy, they're barely making the payment. We see that they've already missed some payments. We see that the house is in bad shape and it's not going to get any better. But these are the individuals that are saying, I'm not going to sell. Well, I just want you guys to know that so many of those individuals end up using you all to sell 
because there's gets it gets to a point where they realize I'm going to have to do something right. And so at least having some information on how they can do that and it's not as bad as they think it is will help you to transition those individuals. The idea that maybe they they don't because I have a lot of this. I, I, you know what I don't want to sell my house because you know what I'm probably going to have to go to. Pardon me if you're from Arizona or whatever. I'm going to go to Arizona. It's hot. I'm going to go someplace I don't want to go. I want to stay in California because that's going to be my only option if I sell this house. Really? Well, why is that? Well, because I can't really afford a payment. And when I sell the house, I'm only going to have 300000 Oh, really? Well, how about if you use a reverse purchase loan where you can still buy a $600,000 home when you sell your $800,000 home, and then you have an optional mortgage payment. That way you can still stay in an area you want to, you're not forced to make a payment, yet if you have extra money, you can contribute. So as soon as we start helping money with different options, then all of a sudden they're saying, well, geez, maybe, maybe I can sell and stay around. So the client asked you, hey, how does this reverse mortgage work? Okay. Hopefully after taking the class today, the first thing you're going to think to yourself is, wow, this is a client that needs help. Not, this is a client that is just going to refinance. Client asks you what a reverse mortgage is. You know that they need your help and my help, number one. How does this work, Mr. and Mrs. Realtor? Well, you know how your normal loan works, right? You get a statement once a month. You have to make a payment. Just know that reverse, you get a statement once a month, and you decide if you want to make a payment. That's the basic difference. Oh, okay. Well, can I get cash out like a regular refinance if I was to do that? Sure. When you refinance with a reverse mortgage, if you use it as a refinance, you can get cash out like you do your regular loan. You can set up an equity line like you do with an equity line loan. There's lots of different ways to refinance with reverse. So that's just a little bit of extra information you can have for them to hold their interest for a little bit longer. Knowing in the back of your mind, they have a less than 50% chance of probably getting the reverse. You still, so you wanna be able to have helpful information for them. Okay. A lot of times at this point in time, that's where an agent would say, here, you know, call Ryan or something like that. And then I would let them know, oh, it doesn't look like the reverse is going to work for you, or maybe you want to do something else. And that's when I send them back to you. Your job isn't necessarily to tell them that a reverse is not going to work. Your job is just to stay open to know there's a good chance of it coming back to you. Okay. All right, let's get to an example here. Does everybody have a package? You need a package? All right. Oh, we need two. Mel, you need a package? All right. You want an extra package? Oh, well, thank you. Very helpful. Okay. Let's go through an example of how a reverse purchase would work. So the client is not going to refinance. Maybe what happened is the client thought they were going to refinance, and then they figured out what? The refinance, a reverse mortgage wasn't going to help them. So... It's come back to you as the realtor, and it turns out you need to sell. That happens a lot. So their house happens to be worth 850. I have here, they're 73 years old. Why do I have that? Because a reverse mortgage lends money based on how old you are. The older you are, the more money we give. Why is that? Well, if you think about it, if I'm giving somebody money for a house and they don't have to make a payment, and if they don't make a payment, the balance goes up, the younger you are, the longer you have of maybe not making a payment, right? And the higher the balance can go up. So I have to be more conservative to give you money to make sure there's equity. If you're 105 years old, you're gonna get a lot of money because your life expectancy is a couple of years maybe. If you're 62 years old, I'm gonna give you what? Not near as much money, because I'm like, dude, this person's gonna to live to 92 years old and never make a payment to me. I better be conservative. So in this case, the client's 73 years old. And they have said, I need to sell my house. Either I'm tight on the payment, I got no money in the bank, maybe the house needs work, maybe I gotta move somewhere else because I wanna move. Okay, cool. Well, you sell their house. Right? You sold their 850 house after they paid off the mortgage they had on their home, just a regular mortgage, whatever they had. They have 400000 in their pocket. And now they're saying to you, hey, 
Mr. and Mrs. Realtor, you sold my house. I have 400,000 bucks in the bank. And I have found a replacement property for 600,000. Okay. Well, you only have 400,000 cash. So I guess we should start trying to figure out a loan for you. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want to be stuck by the payment again. Oh, well, we got a problem. You want $600,000 house, you want 400,000 cash, but you don't get a loan. You can't do that. Oh, well, what are my other options? Because by the way, not only do I have that 400,000 cash, but I don't want to use all of it to buy my next home. I got to put some in the bank. Okay, so you want to buy a $600,000 home. Maybe you don't want to have to have a mortgage payment and you don't even want to use all 400,000. That doesn't work, okay? Unless you know a guy like me. So I'd say, look, based on your age of 73, I will give you a $341,000 purchase reverse mortgage. You put down 259. So that's how we get your $600,000 home bought. As a bonus, you didn't use all your 400. You have 141 in the bank. So this is a very typical downsizing scenario we see all the time. Okay. Lots of people in LA, Orange County, selling houses, 850 is garden variety. And they're moving somewhere. Then maybe they're moving to Marietta, Temecula. Maybe they're moving out towards uh, Bakersfield a little bit, wherever they're going. They're finding that I can still own a house in California for 600, just not in LA, not in Orange County maybe, or a smaller house, maybe a condominium. I can buy a condo for 600. But at least done now is I've put cash in the bank and I've given myself what with the reverse? An optional mortgage payment. I haven't put myself in a position where if I can't make that mortgage payment, I'm in trouble. That doesn't mean I can't make one if I don't want to, but if I'm making it and something goes wrong, I got to skip six, nothing will happen to me. Or for those people who say I never want to pay again, it doesn't, whatever you want to do. But we've given you the freedom and the protection of knowing that if you don't or can't, nothing will happen to you. No foreclosure, no nothing. And by the way, we've given this person a $341,000 loan. This person might only have $1,800 in Social Security income. That's it. But we gave them a $341,000 loan. That's back for you guys. Because as you're going to learn in our next slide, there's a lot of people out there that are just living on Social Security. So we don't have a lot of retired homeowners that can fully qualify for a regular loan. But what do I need here? Social Security income. $341,000 loan, and don't worry about if you miss a payment. Who cares? We don't ask for a payment. So that is the idea with the reverse purchase loan. How about the interest rate? Uh, if I told you 15%, would that be high? Would that? Would, okay. I'll take it. If I told you 12%, would that be high? Yeah, it would, right? Okay. Interest rates on reverse mortgages, depending on which one you need, range anywhere from 2.9% up to 6.9%. And there, we have fixed and adjustable. The fixed ones can start at around 2.9. The adjustable start at about 2. So the rates are basically pretty good a little bit higher than conventional. Our loans are a little bit higher than your conventional loans for cost, right? So someone, I had a, somebody the other day was saying, Ryan, your loan's more expensive than a conventional. I was like, you're right. I said, well, go get a conventional loan. Oh, you won't hurt my feelings. Well, I can't afford to do that. Oh, well, you got a problem here. You, then you can take my loan. Well, I don't want the, the rates higher. Well, go get a conventional. Well, I can't get it. Oh man, you're making me crazy. So we're about a half a percent higher than what regular loans are, right? Why that? Well, if you were somebody lending your money and the person borrowing the money said, thanks for lending me 300,000. By the way, you won't see a payment from me for maybe 30 years. Would you have to get a little higher rate than somebody who you're getting interest from on a monthly basis? Well, sure, it's the cost of money. You can't go make money because you got to wait for this person to pass away. So it's going to be a little higher interest rate. That's what it is. It's not necessarily a bank trying to make more money on you. It's that they've tied up their funds for potentially 30 years. All right. 
that got your rates. So I will tell you, there's two loans. There's an FHA reverse mortgage. It's called a HECM. Those are the rates that are typically two to about 3.3% on their adjustable and fixed. Why is there two different products? FHA loans are really designed for houses that are about 900,000 and below. If you got houses that you're buying that are refinancing that are 900,000 or higher, you use a non-reverse, a non-government reverse. Since it's not a government reverse, the rates are much higher. Those rates are gonna be anywhere between 4.9 to 6.9, depending on what product you choose. Those are for higher loan amounts. The private industry is making more money on those. The government doesn't insure them. But for most of the loans that we're doing, it's gonna be that government insured reverse mortgage called the HECM, which is the two to 3.3%. All right, I'll get through the slide and then we'll ask questions if we got. Any. All right. You'll hear me say many times, I can get somebody a loan when they can't get a regular loan. We qualify easily, all of those things, right? But that doesn't mean every single person can get a reverse mortgage. We still have some qualifications. And so the idea is that if we have a client who's gonna sell their home and buy their next home using a reverse, we wanna pre-underwrite that file because it takes us a lot longer to underwrite a file than a conventional loan. Conventional loans use DU, which is an automated system. The system looks at their credit. The system looks at everything and says, here's your DU approval. Our industry doesn't do that. We take sometimes a week to two weeks to approve a loan because we actually have to request history from clients. I gotta look at their homeowner's history for the last year. I gotta look at their tax history for the last two years. There's something off on their credit. I got to have them, hey, why did you miss your mortgage payment last month? So it can take us longer. So we always wanna make sure we're pre-underwriting loans before you probably would sell a client's home and tell them to go buy a house in reverse. Because we wanna have them all approved, of course, before they sell their house. Okay, I, I got a call like a year and a half ago from an agent. And they said, oh, my client had sold their house and they thought they were approved for reverse, but they weren't. And I was like, oh no. And she's like, yeah, they're homeless. I said, oh my gosh, okay. I got lucky, I was able to figure out what went wrong with the other lender and got the loan done, but we don't want to see that happen to you guys. So we want to pre-underwrite. A client has to get counseling done. What does that mean? Well, the government just wants to make sure that our industry is doing a good job and explaining the loan to a client. The client understands, hey, even though I'm getting a loan that I don't have to make a payment on, that doesn't mean it's free. There's still interest. It'll just be added on to the loan. I got to pay my tax and insurance. I can't make this an Airbnb. There's a few rules the government wants to make sure a client understands before they get a reverse. And so I give them phone numbers and they call up a counseling company and they spend about 30 minutes with this nonprofit company. And when they're done, they get a certificate that says you made it. Here's your reverse mortgage certificate. And then when I receive that, that's when I can actually get a loan done. Okay, so I love realtors, right? You guys pay my bills. You guys give me loans, right? And I tell you guys these things. And then I get a call from a realtor in the middle of escrow. Hey, I'm ready. The client needs to do reverse. And I'm like, oh, did you get them pre-underwritten? No. Oh, did you get them counseled? No. Oh, you, you, we got 45 days probably to get the loan done and you're in the middle of escrow. So it's important that we reach out ahead of time to make sure we get things done and they get counseled. You can't give credits to clients on reverses and neither can an agent, the seller, nobody. Everybody gets to, has to pay their own costs. And if there's something wrong with the house, the seller can't say, oh, here's 2000 bucks, buyer, leave me alone, it's as is. We don't allow those type of credits. FHA wants to make sure that the client's buying a house, everybody's paying their own sides and they're not being induced to buy a house because the seller is doing something maybe that they think is good. They want the house to pass appraisal and everyone to pay their own costs. You don't have to get a termite inspection to get a reverse. You don't have to do a home inspection. If you put those on your contract, then I have to see them and then they have to be fixed. So if a client wants to buy a house as is, I would suggest not putting those inspections on the contract because otherwise my underwriter is gonna say, where are those inspections at? 
We have to have section one and section two of a clearance on a termite report if you put pest inspection on the contract. So the idea here is that we don't want to see you guys doing all kinds of inspections and then think that the, it's going to be okay because the seller is just going to give them a credit. Won't happen that way. <clears throat> the end of the day, this number here is uh, for realtors. This is a realtor hotline. That way, if you guys are potentially seeing an older homeowner and you want to be prepared in case they have a reverse question, maybe you are sitting with them and they want to sell their house, but they're like, I don't know what I'm going to be able to afford. I can only afford a $300,000 house, so I don't think I'm gonna list. And you're like, oh, hold on a second. You know, you could take that 300 and there's a loan out there with optional payments <clears throat> and it'll get you to a $600,000 home. Oh, really, how does that work? Well, if you don't make payments, your balance goes up. If you make a payment, your balance stays the same, but you could use that to buy a house and that way we can get you to a house you like. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so hopefully that just continued the conversation from someone seeing what their net figure was and saying, I'm not going to be able to do anything with that. Just saying, oh, that's kind of interesting. I'd like to learn more about that. I have a question. And you're like, hold on a second. Let me dial this hotline. Or whatever it may be, you're, in, you're going to get into escrow. This is your hotline to ask questions. We usually staff it seven days a week. And it should be somebody, if somebody doesn't answer the question for you, then they'll get somebody. So that, hey, I know you guys are out there on Saturdays and Sundays working. So are we. So this should help you answer questions that I'm definitely going to not get to today. Okay, do we have any questions? Okay, anything uh, in the chat room or any questions there? No questions in the chat room yet. Okay. Is the mortgage always 30 years or can be variable 15 or 30, 20 years? Okay. So, and that's the first question. Let me finish the second. Okay. The second question is what hypothetically the person do reach 30 year mortgage done and he's still alive or she's still alive. Yeah. Uh, what, what, are we, what, what is the option we can do? Okay. All right. So I'm glad you asked that question. I'm going to run back here just to this slide real quick, just so you know, you got it. Okay. So the loan has no end date. And if you get a fixed reverse, it's fixed your entire life. We do the adjustable. It's the same. The loan is for your lifetime, though. We don't have any 10, 20, or 30 year type thing because we don't know how long you're going to live for, right? Maybe I give you a 30 year fix and you live 31 years. And I'm like, oh, we're off by a year. Okay. <laughs> well, so the idea is that we're just going to say, hey, as long as you live, we, you got to deal with us. That the deal is if you decide never to send a payment in and you live to 105, we have to do that. Okay. I get these funny calls. I had a guy walk into the office like two years ago and, and he was an older guy. And I was like, Hey, I got a, I got a, I got a client coming in the door. I got excited. He's like, I don't want a loan. And I was like, okay, what can I do for you? It's like, I just want to tell you about my aunt. He's like, we got a loan for her when she was 63 years old and she lived to 105. So she had the loan for 42 years and never made a payment. So you think uh, he was like, dude, that worked out pretty good for us, right? So then answer your question, there is no time frame. And if you get a fixed rate reverse, it's there until you pass away. If you, whatever you get, it's there till you pass away. Okay, is both party or just one party or whoever the primary party is gonna pass away is a, make a determination of the end of the loan. Okay, so I'll get to that question coming up in a slide. He wants to know, what if you're married? Who's on the loan with you? What happens if one passes away? One, you get a divorce, right? All these things that happen. I'll cover that coming up. Okay. Uh, I know you, you were almost raising your hand. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I got your answer. Okay. No end. Okay. So she said, what happens if you get to the point where you've lived there long enough? Maybe the housing market's coming down a little bit. You haven't made a payment. So your balance is going up and you get to a point where there's no equity. Okay, I'm gonna answer that in two parts. One, for the heirs, we got a slide for that. For you as the homeowner, nothing. Because the deal is, no matter how long you live, no matter what the house is worth, no matter how many payments you skip, you may know, you get to stay. Except, heir, right, are the heirs gonna left holding the bag? I don't know. I'll, you'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen to them. We gotta to get to that part of the story. 
Yeah, thanks, mom. You left me $150,000 debt. Okay, all right. Fortunately, I don't think that's gonna happen, okay? But you gotta wait to see what happens to the poor heirs, okay? All right, just a couple things. You guys might already know this, and I'm gonna go through this fast because I'm already gonna go over on my time. It happens with live classes. Uh, do we have any older homeowners in California? <laughs> a lot, okay? So the question is, if we have a lot of older homeowners, how are they doing? Does everybody have a lot of money saved up? Does everybody have no retirement issues? No, okay? So we have 10,000 boomers turning 65 years old every day. If you add their parents in there, I mean, we, we probably have uh, at this point in time, 110 million people over the age of 56, which is the age when, a lot, when they start selling homes. Why do they start selling homes? Well, here's part of the reason why. Only about almost half of our poor boomers, they got no retirement savings. Guess what, boomers? Neither do your kids. So it's a generational problem. It's hard to save money. But when you're a boomer and you're retiring and you got no retirement income, all you got is Social Security, that's tough. Guess what? Of our boomers that have some retirement, only about half of them have about 100,000 bucks. That's just not going to cut it. Okay. All you Gen X people out there like me, I'm going to let you know. You need to start saving too because you're well on your way to not having enough money for retirement. So this is just a problem that we have in general. Okay. So our boomers, you're retiring. You don't have enough saved. Social Security sure isn't a, a helpful thing. By the way, it's not necessarily because you're a terrible saver. It's not because you're a bad person. I can tell you what happened in the 70s. If you worked for Sears in 1973, selling tools or lawnmowers, you know what you had? You had a pension plan from Sears. When you retired from selling lawnmowers, you had a nice pension. You know what Sears is doing now? They're going out of business. So companies started figuring out how expensive it is to save for their employees. And they said, we can't do this anymore. But you know what? My grandpa, who might have worked at Sears, didn't have a conversation with my mom and say, Jan, when you retire, you won't have a pension like I will. You should start saving $100 a week for the next. He didn't have that conversation with her. So she ended up underfunded in retirement. Sorry, mom. So this is one of the reasons why, though, we turn to our homes and say, ah, I got to find some extra money for retirement. How am I going to do this? Fortunately, for all of us in California, and now I do loans in California, so I can say, fortunately for all of us, we have some pretty good appreciation in California. Matter of fact, California is skewed for how much appreciation we get to most, a lot of the rest of the nation. So by owning a home in California, whether you realize it or not, you are helping your retirement because now you need to cash in. For you as realtors, that's very important. Why? Because not everyone is going to be able to get a reverse mortgage. Not everybody is going to figure out how to get some extra money. So that's probably why we have people who are saying, I will never sell my house, and they sell it. While we have maybe over half of the homes being sold by older homeowners because they've come to the conclusion that, if I don't sell this place, I'm going to lose this place. This is not a reverse mortgage problem. But as a realtor, you have the tool to help them. Now, sure, sometimes a client will say, oh, you've told me I could sell my house and rebuy a house through a reverse mortgage, and then I got all excited because you called me. But a lot of times that doesn't happen at all. Sometimes they say, look, I just got to sell this, and I'm going to go live with my kids. We're going to build a mother-in-law unit on the back of the house. I'm going to go buy something cash in a much lower priced area. So these stats for you are still great for you. Sometimes they're great for me because a client wants to still own a home and they get a reverse. But for you guys, a lot of it's just going to be safe. So this is why I go back to the point when a client says to you, I'm never going to sell this house. I'm going to stay here. And then you look at the house, if you have seen the house, and it's not in great shape. And you look at that car. Mm. 
Does that thing run still? What they're saying and what's happening are two different things, right? So you as a realtor have to pick up on that. And I'm not saying that you say to them, you know, it looks like you're broke. Are you sure you don't want to list your house with me? No. But instead, I'll, we've written some things, some things to help you out with this. We have some newsletters I'll show you that you can send to them that we know that older homeowners have sold have asked these questions. So now what you do is you put information in front of them where they're like, hey, they didn't ask me to list my house, but they gave me an article about transferring tax base. They gave me an article of why I should be aware of cash buyers. They gave me this newsletter that talks about a loan I can get where I can still buy another house and have an optional payment. You're feeding them information that we know that they want when they realize they might have to sell without you pointing it out to them so bluntly. Does that make sense? Yeah. If they pay off their house, how are they going to do that? Oh. Okay, hold on. You, if they own their house free and clear and they want to buy another house with the reverse, you mean? Oh, they can do that. Yeah, you can pull money out of one house, rent it out, and then go buy another house with the reverse mortgage. They have to live wherever the reverse mortgage is. So if they're going to do a reverse mortgage purchase, they got to live in the house they're buying. If they're going to refinance, they got to live in that house, but they can get cash out maybe to go buy another house. Possible. I'm so far behind on time. We keep going. This just demonstrates what I was talking about. We have uh, over seven trillion. I think it's even might be eight trillion now of equity in our homeowners age 65 and over. Yet half of our boomers have no savings. Do you see what's going on here? Do you see the message? We have a lot of money in equity and not a lot of money in our bank accounts. And for many people, that spells, I got to do something. Even if I don't want to, and I'm telling you I don't want to, let's look for the signs and get them some information so they'll come back and say, hey, you know, you gave me this thing about um, how I can transfer a tax base or how capital gains work. Can you tell me more about that? Oh, sure. You want to know about Prop 19? Hmm, that's interesting. Would somebody that's never going to sell their house want to know about Prop 19? Probably not. Okay, so this gets to our question. We had two questions here. What happens to a reverse mortgage if you live a long time and it ends up upside down? What happens to your heirs? Are they left holding the bag? How long can you live there for? Okay, well, we know you can live there forever till you pass away. But let's visit what happens when you get to that point when you passed away and your heirs have to do something. Well, there are a lot of homes with heirs that pass away and there's still equity in it, even though they had a reverse mortgage. More so than ever, and I'll tell you why. Because old reverse mortgages that have been around for a long time, we used to lend a lot more money. And that could put the house in a negative position quicker if they didn't make any payments. We are more conservative now in how much we're lending, which means as long as historical appreciation stays where it is, we should have homes with equity when the homeowners are passing away. And in this case, you see above water, that means the house has equity when the heirs get it. So what do the heirs do? This is where you become a specialist. And this is where, if you find people with reverse mortgages, ask them a few questions. Hey, what are your heirs gonna do when they inherit the property? They're gonna be like, I don't know. I don't even know how they get the property. Oh, well, I, this is what I know about. Here's my card. Make sure your kids have it. So when something happens to you, I can make sure they get the house. Really? You can help with that? I can. If you want, I'd be happy to meet your heirs. You know why? Because I want them to know me. I want them to know how much I know. And then maybe I can get business from them anyways as well. Right? Whenever you can offer something that another agent can't, isn't this a good way to get your foot in the door? Okay. I get my foot in the door a lot. Okay. Because I know stuff that other agents don't know. I'm not an agent, but I'm a loan officer. And I know a lot about reverses. So, oh, you have a reverse mortgage? Cool. Hey, did you know your heirs can just take over the house when you pass away? Oh, really? How does that happen? Well, first of all, they need to be on title or the house has to be in a trust to so avoid probate. Okay. Old probate thing you guys should know about. Once you know that you have that, by the way, if you don't have that, let me help you do that. If you have that, then this is what happens. 
When you pass away, your heirs need to get a hold of the servicer. If the house has equity and they want to keep it, all they need to do is let the servicer know that I'm going to refinance and pay you off. And if you keep in contact with the servicer, you can get up to 12 months to do that. So you can get to a year to figure this out. So heirs, if that happens and you want help, get a hold of me. I'll find somebody that can help you get a loan and get in there. Now, most of the time, they're not going to do the loan, just so you know. So the second option is when they pass away, get a hold of me. We're going to get a hold of the servicer. Make sure they know that you want to sell the house so they don't foreclose. And then we're going to get the house on the market. You're going to sell it. And after the loan is paid off, you're going to get the difference. And that's what I will do for your heirs or heirs. That's how I can help you at a time when you're distraught because your last parent has passed away. This is your angle. Don't ever let someone with a reverse mortgage out of your grasp. This is future business for you. Call the 888 line. I'll help you figure out how to stay in front of them. Here's the second part. What if the house doesn't have any equity? Okay, hey, you have a reverse mortgage, Mr. or Mrs. Jones? You, did you know if, if your house ends up upside down, your heirs can still inherit the house and they can inherit it without all the money that you owe? Really? Yeah. As a matter of fact, if you owe more than what the house is worth when you pass away, I can help your heirs erase the part that's upside down. It's a provision in the reverse. And I understand how it works. This is how it works. Let's say the house is worth 300 and the parents owed 400 when they passed away. As long as this is an FHA reverse, FHA will do this. They will say, look, we are going to erase the upside down portion and we will let the heirs have it at 5% under market value, as said by an appraiser. So what happens is, since this is an FHA insured loan, FHA is saying to the heirs, you have in FHA insurance on this. It's part of the loan. Therefore, when they pass away, we're going to take the upside down portion, throw it away, and you can just refinance the house for 5% under market value. In this case, 285 is 5% less than 300. Just get 285, refinance it, get cash, whatever, and the house is yours. We give the bank the 115,000 they're missing. Oh, that's pretty interesting for a client to hear that stuff. Because maybe the chances of the house upside down when the heirs get it is not great, but that is a cool story to be able to tell them, and the heirs will like that. Here's my card. Give it to the kids. Let them know I can help them figure that out. What if, now, if the kids don't want the house, hey, the kids can walk away. These are non-recourse loans, which means that no one ever come back to the heirs and go, you know, this house is uh, 150000 upside down. We know your parents had an estate with money in it, or they owned other houses. That stuff doesn't happen. If the kids are away, they'll never hear from anybody, as a matter of fact, because what happens is FHA or whoever the servicer is at that point in time, HUD, will just have to foreclose on the home because they haven't heard from anybody. Nobody's called to say they want the house. So they'll foreclose. It'll go to auction. If it sells at auction, an investor gets it. If nobody buys it at auction, it ends up as a HUD REO. But either way, nobody comes back to the heirs and says, hey, you owe us money. Doesn't happen. Finally, the short sale. The house upside down, hopefully you are still in contact with them because they've caught a hold of you because they know that you're going to help. And they said, you know, we really don't want the house, but we wouldn't want to go into foreclosure. Okay, well, I'll short sell it. I'll take you out to a nice dinner. Okay, I'll do something very nice for you. And then we will short sell the house. So the heirs get up to a year to make these things happen. So the government, the bank, nobody wants this house. They want the heirs to do whatever they want with it. They just need them to step up and then you can help them with these things. Even if you don't know how to do any of these things, you tell them you can help them and then you call me and I tell you what to do and then you help them. Any way we look at it, I want to make sure that you all get the listing for coming here and listening to me for an hour. You got to get paid somehow. I'm not going to give you any money today. You guys know that, right? but I hope to give you something that will make you money and use me as much as you can for a resource. Because of people, again, with reverse mortgages, even though they may have heard what was supposed to happen when they got the loan, they forget and their heirs don't pay attention. So they need you all. 
All right, so this is how you get, this is bullet point number three. This is how reverse helps you get business in the future. All right, I gotta cover the next like four slides in four minutes. Just so you know, that's not gonna happen, but I'll do my best. You wanna hang out, those of you out there that are streaming, please try to hang on, because I'm gonna go over some free marketing stuff. I'm gonna show you how to hop on a free couple free website and get free newsletters out to people. I wanna help you cultivate some business with everything I'm talking about today. All right, I'll go through these quickly. You guys should know these by now. Does the bank or the government own the home? No, it's just a loan. It's just like a regular loan on title. That's it. The heirs have all the rights at the end to do whatever they want to do. If there's any equity left, the heirs can get that. Sell the house, refinance it. You can get up to a year to do that. Nobody wants this house. The only time that it does go to foreclosure is when nobody tries to do anything. Then it has to get foreclosed on. Just like a regular home has to get foreclosed on if nobody calls up the lender. Okay, heirs, yes, you get a year to do something. If the house ends up underwater, I can no longer live there. No, remember, the loan is for your lifetime. Even if that house is upside down, I saw a reverse mortgage house that was up, upside down, almost $500,000. The uh, borrowers owed almost a million dollars, and this was in the recession, and the house is worth 500. You know how much the heirs could have got that house for, ready? This goes back to the next slide, it's a test. They owed a million, it was worth 500. How much could the heirs get that house for with an FHA reverse? 475. FHA would have had to cough up $525,000 in interest and give it to the bank. And the heirs would have been like, thanks for taking care of my parents for me. Now I'm gonna get this house that has equity in it. Maybe I'll flip it. That's the reality of what I've seen at this is not really happening much anymore with all the equity, but that's what I'm talking about where the heirs don't, the heirs don't have to worry if it was underwater. Uh, whoever was the reverse mortgage borrower, you stay there for the rest of your life if it's underwater. But this is how you mess up a reverse mortgage. Are you ready? Because you can get foreclosed on with reverse. I've heard it. I get calls from agents. My client's getting foreclosed on. They have a reverse. You told me they stay there for the rest of their lives, Ryan. I said, I did. You're right. There's got to be a problem. There's one of three ways that happens. Number one, if you move out of the house or leave the house permanently, you can't do that with the reverse. You can be gone for a year. If you got to go to the hospital, no problem. If a year is coming up, get back to... Oh, that's how you do it. You can be gone for 10 years, but you can't do it in a row. You got to come back once a year. He's called the servicer. Okay. It hasn't been a leaky pipe for six months. Make sure the house okay. That's what we want to know. We don't care where you go. We're concerned about the house because that's what we lent you money on. But this is how you mess up a reverse mortgage. Go ahead and throw it on Airbnb and watch what happens. Somebody will report you. The servicer will figure it out and you'll get a notice of default that says you're not following the rules. So you better get your butt back in the house and clear the default. Pay your taxes and insurance. Yes, you got to pay taxes and insurance, even if you're not making a mortgage payment. The county wants their money. You got to keep a house insured. If you stop paying those, you will get default. We used to have a lot of defaults because of taxes. You know why? Because we used to not qualify for income at all. We would just give you a reverse, even if you made no money. And what happened? Well, you don't pay your taxes. Well, then we got to foreclose because the county is going to foreclose. So nowadays what we do is we, that's why like, we got to make sure you got a little bit of money coming in. We want to make sure you can pay that tax and insurance so we don't have to foreclose on it. But that used to happen. We've dropped our foreclosure rate, I think by about five or 6% since we started asking for income. That's good for us and for clients because they know if they don't have enough the taxes, you shouldn't own a home anyways, even with the reverse. Okay, finally, maintain the home to FHA standards. What does that mean? It's a big, long list. Here's what I tell clients. When I give you your reverse mortgage or you buy a house, the reverse mortgage, you got an appraisal done. The appraisal said that you met the minimum qualifications of FHA standards. So try to keep the house in that condition. If it gets a broken window and somebody calls a servicer and, hey, did you know? Did you know that Sam's window was broken? Maybe you got a neighbor that doesn't like you. Well, that's not, then you, you're not making the standard because that's a health and safety issue. We don't check unless somebody notifies us that there's a problem. But just keep the house in the condition that it was and you got the loan and you're fine. Okay, so what do we see here? There are ways to get foreclosed on. If you follow these three rules, 
you're in good shape. They're the basic rules. You will hear someone say, somebody that's maybe not a reverse mortgage person say, hey, those foreclosure rates are high on reverse mortgages. One of the reasons that that is, is that when the borrowers pass away, if the heirs or nobody gets a hold of the servicer, the only way the servicer can do anything is to put start foreclosure proceedings. So we're foreclosing on people that aren't alive anymore. Well, that's because we have to do something. But so that makes our foreclosure rate maybe look higher than a normal loan because we're, we have to do something to get that house moving, get the heirs to show up, get our money back. But it's not because they're alive and they were following these rules. If you follow these rules, you're there for as long as you live. I'm two minutes over. I bet you I got another 10 minutes. Please hang on. Okay. Is there food somewhere too? Hopefully. Um, okay. Since I said that every age gets a different loan amount, okay, here's the deal. I can't ask you to remember every age. I can't do it because guess what? It changes. So this calculator is something we built for you all. You download it on your phone. It's a free app. And you put the ages of the borrowers in there, put the purchase price, and it'll tell you what their down payment needs to be, at least for homes that are 900000 or less. Okay, you got a more expensive home they're buying or refinancing, you got to call us. But the whole idea of this application is now if you're sitting at a client, their, their house, they're, they want to list their house. And they're like, hey, I'm only going to have $300,000 if you sell my house for me. That's not enough for me to do anything. Oh, well, hold on a second here. You know, if you took that $300,000 and used a reverse purchase, you could actually get a house for $650,000 and have an optional payment. Really? Yeah. This is the calculator. This is a reverse purchase. If you're interested, well, I'll get you some more information. Keep that conversation going. Okay. Married couples, guess what? If you want to marry, if you're 65 years old and you want to marry someone 20 years old, hey, I'm not your guy, but you can get a reverse mortgage because we will let married people get a reverse mortgage and we will protect the younger spouse, not our, no matter how young you are, because you're married but we qualify in the lowest age. So the younger the spouse, the less money you get. If you're not married and you wanna do a loan with somebody, anybody, I don't care, your neighbor, your brother, somebody you just met, two wanna get a risk mortgage together today, cool, you both gotta be over 62, okay? So just know that these are just some little funny rules that you have to know when you're using the calculator. All right, you download this on your phone, you see where it says at the top, R-E-B, the number four, P-U-R, Type that into your app store, okay? You guys all got Apple phones? Yes? Any Android phones? Same thing. Any Nokias? You gotta go get a new phone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, that used to be the facto, right? If you had a Nokia, like that was the top of the line. Okay, not anymore. Okay, I can't help you with that. All right, let's run through it. Quick marketing, I'll take some questions and then we'll be good, okay? All right, here's the thing. I don't want you to do anything other than just have learned. And I want you guys to just know if somebody asked about a reverse mortgage, there might be an opportunity for you to have some business, okay? That's number one. But let's say in your own neighborhood, you know somebody that's older. Maybe you have an older client who you're like, gosh, what's going on with them? Well, maybe they're that client that thinks, I can't get a loan to go buy a house. So I'm not gonna talk to a realtor. They're just going to try to sell my house, and then where are they going to put me? Well, maybe they don't know about things that are out there. But eventually, that client is going to get to the point where they might have to sell anyways, and you want to be the person that they call when they have no other choice, right? So we have a couple of tools. They're, you use them. The first one, go court them. It's gocourtemactually.com is a website. This is software we made for you all. What does it do? It does this. If you're like, man, I know this older individual. I think they're having a hard time, but I don't want to tell that to them. I just want to get a list I need to sell. Put them into our website, fordham.com. What does that do? It starts them a series of newsletters for six months from you talking about older homeowners and what selling their homes. What happens with their taxes? Hey, what if I go to retire to an older home or uh, an, a uh, senior community? Hey, what happened to the guy? I just got a, a proposition. I heard a, uh, a radio commercial that I can buy my house cash and I don't need a realtor, right? 
Does that, does that usually fare well for how much money they get? No, right? Those guys want to buy cash. They want it cheap. But does the client know that? No, that sounds great to them. So you want to have this information in front of them. So if you go to goldquarter.com, we will send for a few clients. I can't do your whole database. I will go broke. But for like three or four clients, if you think, hey, this person is older and it looks like maybe I know what their house looks like or I saw what kind of car they're driving and it doesn't look like it's in great shape, you want to get them some information on how other older people have sold homes and done well, put them in that website. We'll mail them for you. Actual mail for six months just to see what we could do. We're hoping for a loan. We're hoping for you for a listing. Have some fun with it. All you got to do is put like three pieces of information in the website. That's it. And it happens. Okay. And then we'll even let you know, hey, we just sent out a letter to them. Watch and see. Hey, we just sent them an email. If you know them, see what happens. It could be fun. How about Title Pro 24-7? You see that one? What if you want to know in your own neighborhood who has a reverse mortgage already? Wouldn't that be cool? Because then you could send them something that indicates you help heirs of borrowers that have reverse mortgages maintain control of the asset. As somebody with a reverse mortgage, wouldn't that be good to know? I got somebody local here that's going to help my kids get the house if something happens to me. You can use Title Pro. I'll show you how to use it. For probably about 15 cents, you could have everybody in your neighborhood that has a reverse mortgage and know about it. We do other things with that too. We have short videos that I'll show you how to get in a second. Where we actually use that title pro, we'll pull data. You can do exactly what you do. The data, what were we looking for? Not for reverse mortgage people. We were looking, we were using data that we have used in the past to find a homeowner that's older that has a potential to sell a home. How do we know that? Well, there's some pretty good indicators. If I'm 70 years old, I got a big mortgage payment. I just tax default on my house. Is that good news? No. So have some fun with it. Watch the videos that Rob and I, we actually get inside our cars and we videotape it for you. We use that software. We show you how to pull it. We take the three homeowners we pulled that cost us 18 cents. That's how much that company charges. And then we knocked on three doors. You don't have to do that, but at least you can see the results. And did that. And then guess what? The third homeowner had a tax default, they lost their job, and they were in trouble. That's a great lead for a realtor. I'm not a realtor. You know what I did? I was like, oh, she doesn't want to refinance. I'm out of here, right? Like an idiot because I know all you guys. But I just want to just show you how you can have some fun and just using some software and some simple information we give you just to see, even if you just want to track a neighborhood and see what happens and see if this stuff works without even doing anything. It's still cool. And then maybe you'll get to the point where you're like, hey, I'm going to go into Go Quorum and put that person's information in there this time. See what it kicks out for me. Okay, we do the Go Quorum for free, the Title Pro. We, we get you signed. We give you a login. You can surf it, do it for free if you want the information. It's like five cents. Anyways, this is a way that you can take what I'm talking about today and try to turn it into something without doing much. Okay? And we'll show you how to do all this stuff. We got like short six-minute videos. It's well worth the time. I'm going to give you logins today. If you guys are leaving me your, your card today, I'll give you free logins. All this stuff is tutorials that Rob and I have spent a lot of time on. So you guys can watch a five minute video on something. If you've got nothing else to do, Rob and I are semi entertaining. Sometimes if you need a good laugh, watch us try to explain something. Uh, this is some more lessons on reverses. I couldn't go over today. There's lots of other cool stuff we do with reverses, like putting an equity line, on a reverse purchase loan. So imagine a client buys a house with you. We do a reverse purchase loan where as soon as they buy the house, we have an equity line built in. And guess what? The amount that they can borrow in that equity line automatically goes up, guaranteed. Okay, that's a crazy thing that a government insured reverse does. They can put it, we can put a guaranteed line of credit on there where as long as you put down some extra down payment on the house, that extra down payment you put down actually grows, okay? So that's how you take advantage of future appreciation without even, with just buying a house, you get some future appreciation, okay? All right, so I'm just about over by 10 minutes. Here's some of the newsletters you guys can download from our website for free. Uh, we've written these articles out of our office. We've written them based on what older homeowners have asked 
how this, and this is all stuff that can help you get the interest of an older homeowner and bring the focus to you. They know, hey, this person is right here. or I already know this person. I've met them once or twice. And now they're going to get back a hold of you because not only have you met them before, but they know that you know about cash buyers, heroes loans. Hey, is now the best time to sell when I'm an older homeowner? The best time to sell for an older homeowner is different than the best time to sell for a 35-year-old. It's two different things. You see a lot of stuff out there. A lot of agents put stuff up. When is the best time to sell? Well, when is the best time to sell when I'm retired? It's two different things, right? So we've written these things to help you guys, to help clients stay interested in you. There's that toll-free line again for you all to call. If you have a question on a reverse, if you're sitting with a client, if you have a client that's older, that's in your neighborhood, that looks like they're having a hard time with cash, hey, call the hotline. Maybe we can figure out how to get you in front of them. Email me. I can tell you right now, a lot of times I don't respond to the first email because I get a lot of them. So I'm giving you authorization to email me twice. One right after the other then and say, hey, you missed me, Ryan. I didn't get here from you yesterday. Okay, cool. I ain't mad at you. You're the squeaky wheel. I'm going to get to you. So you can email Rob and I direct, and we try to get you guys as quick as possible. But the hotline usually has one of our loan officers or Rob and I answering it to answer questions right away. The website, Reverse Educators. This is what I'm going to give you guys access to. This has all kinds of uh, tutorials on these things. This shows you how to use the GoCordum site. Uh, it has the videos of Rob and I using that Title Pro to figure out which homeowner is likely to sell that's around you. Just follow the exact steps we did and do it in your neighborhood. We did it in our neighborhood by our office. Do it in your neighborhood. And if you see, investors do this stuff all the time, right? Because they what? They want to find out who needs to sell their house. But usually what they don't offer an older homeowner is the solution after they buy their house. And that scares an older homeowner. So now what you're offering an older homeowner is, hey, we, we see that you're in trouble. Here's how you can do this. And here's a solution for what's going to be next for you. That is more important than usually sometimes what they're going to get for the house is what is going to happen to them after they sell the house. So that's the stuff that older homeowners can like and use. Okay, that's it. I'm going to leave you with one last thought. You guys can ask questions. Is this thought, remember, after 10, it's going on 11 years of working with you all and your clients. I just know this. When I first got started in the reverse mortgage business, I thought this was an industry about me doing loans for clients. And that's not what it is. For realtors, when someone asks you what a reverse mortgage is, that's your foot in the door to know that a client needs help. And it's not really the reverse mortgage they're after. They're after a solution for how I'm going to take care of myself in retirement. And many times it's going to be you selling the home, maybe a reverse purchase. Maybe you're just selling the home and downsizing them with no reverse purchase. Maybe they want to know about a reverse refinance. I help them to see if that's good. But the whole point is that those words asking you what that is, is a signal that you hold on to the client. You get us involved, see if we can figure it out. But don't let them go because I believe that's future business for you. And those three ways in that first slide are how it happens. Okay, any questions? Thank you all for hanging out later. 15 minutes long. Appreciate it. All those online, if you have questions. Um, yeah, Jeff, I'm not sure if anybody's popping in. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you so much, Ryan. Uh, let's, uh, I want to thank you so much for educating and providing so much content. It was absolutely amazing. Um, and uh, I think we have your contact information to follow up and, and get more info. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm going to yeah. hand it over to Pauline to close us out. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Ryan, Crystal, and Jeff for this wonderful hybrid session. And we learned lots of good point today, right? If you have any further questions, please contact Ryan directly. On behalf of West and Gabriel Valley Realtors, we would like to truly thanks again, Mr. Ryan Cleese, Reverse Mortgage Educators, for your informative presentation. A quick reminder, tomorrow morning, don't forget to check in our 2021 Virtual Realtor Safety Summit. 
9.30 to 12. Please join us to meet our three speakers online to learn about safety matters. Don't forget to join the CAR image convention virtually in Anaheim as October 6 to 9 and learn a lot of information and new technology throughout the pandemic. We know that we need to learn more about uh, high tech, how to communicate without meeting in person, right? And in October 12, 12 noon, check in commercial seminar, bulk sale, business opportunity sale. Don't miss out any of our education classes prepared to you by education committee leadership. Thanks again, Ryan, Crystal, Jeff, Fang, and all of you, we see through you in our board. We are so exciting. And we see you tomorrow virtual at 9.30 for our 2021 Realtor Safety Summit. See you.